Hello and welcome to another episode of Mastering the Machine from the Automation Academy. This episode is on my new book, Maintenance and Troubleshooting in Industrial Automation. And I just titled it Maintenance and Troubleshooting because uh, the interesting news in this video is that I broke the book into about 24 different sections and we'll be making those available uh, through the Automation Academy or however people want to receive it. Uh, the basic idea behind this is I want to continue to update the book uh, by section without having to republish the whole book every time. So all of these sections will be pretty much independently released uh, as part of NTH University and the Automation Academy. So I hope you enjoy it. It's a little shorter than the regular webinars. Hi, ladies and gents, boys and girls. Welcome to this edition of the Automation Academy's Mastering the Machine. Today, I'm going to be talking about my new book and some things that I'm doing with it and making it available for people. But first, I'm going to get uh, some of this boring advertising stuff out of the way. Uh, what is Mastering the Machine? In 2013, I created a document called Mastering the Machine, and that's what this is named after. And you can download it at these two websites shown here on this screen. And eventually it turned into a training and automation website that includes, among other things, these bi-weekly webinars. Now I say bi-weekly, but it's been three weeks since I did the last one, and it's going to be three weeks before I do the next one. So it's kind of... Uh, uh, usually around the weekend, and I kind of mix it up a little bit. Uh, what is the Automation Academy itself? It is a website. It's called a membership site. And on that site, I have different training videos for uh, mostly for PLCs and things like that. But that's about to change with this book. Um, Alan Bradley, Siemens, Omron, some things like that. There's some job and aptitude assistance, including information from Ken Coleman uh, of uh, Ramsey organization fame, who does a lot of uh, figuring out what you're best at with your jobs and things like that. There's a lot in there on systems integration. There is a library, a downloadable library, and uh, that's where this book also is going to come in pretty heavily. Uh, I'm gonna be putting quite a bit of the book in that library. There are already a hundred documents in there and there is some software and things like that that people can download. Um, there is a community on there. It hasn't been very active. And honestly, uh, I've kind of discontinued my relationship with Buddy Boss, which was the platform. I may reinstate it if it's too difficult to switch to something else. Uh, so that's the community part of it. But of course, people can email me and, and uh, interface with me on things like these Zoom meetings. And then we do have regular events like this Mastering the Machine webinar, which, as I mentioned, uh, has been a kind of a bi-weekly thing. Uh, but I, I have, it's been three weeks since I did the last one. So uh, this is a picture of the cover of my new book. Um, I submitted the book uh, a couple weeks ago. It was finished. It's about 384 pages total. Um, it is labeled with this automation NTH, NTH University logo on it because there is some material in there that pertains to uh, NTH University and uh, automation NTH. There is a, a, a breakdown of a machine in there and some of the software that they use and things like that. And that's honestly where some of the uh, impetus for this book came from originally was Automation NTH has a customer that wanted to create a troubleshooting class. And uh, for the troubleshooting class, I had to create a variety of things, including kind of classical troubleshooting methods and things like that. Uh, so a lot of that ended up in this book, along with a lot of preparatory material, because some of the people that I have taught at Automation NTH previously are things like, you know, pro project managers or um, people that are in management of some type of companies and don't know always all the technical things that are involved with industrial automation. 
And also I've had call from various companies to create troubleshooting material for maintenance people. And one of the problems that you always run into is maintenance people uh, sometimes are very mechanically oriented, but they're missing uh, the electrical side possibly and, and often missing the control side. So a lot of times people don't know uh, software for PLCs. They don't know how PLCs operate. So that's originally where my first book, uh, my PLC book, uh, kind of came from was writing something that was applicable for maintenance people uh, working with PLCs and trying to make it generic and talking about different brands instead of one specific brand. Of course, people can go to websites and take Alan Bradley classes or take in-person uh, classes from Alan Bradley or Siemens or something like that. But I did write my first uh, PLC book in a generic form that kind of described things that were common to all PLCs. And then I found out as I was teaching out of that book, well, sometimes people were there for specific uh, platforms. So they needed a lot of the hardware uh, things for those platforms. So I still teach classes kind of generically when I teach my own classes, uh, but then I have to flavor them with whatever brand somebody's taking. So if they're learning, you know, Siemens TI portal, then I have to provide uh, the Siemens hardware that is in back of it. So that's kind of where that, that came from, that original book. But as you can see, this book uh, is sort of along the same format as my previous book. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to hold this up here where people can see uh, some of my existing books. This one, uh, Advanced PLC Hardware and Programming, has the same little kind of slashed cover. Um, the cover itself is similar, except, of course, it doesn't have the automation NTH and NTH University logo on it. But uh, the, the overall format is basically like this. This book is 346 pages long, kind of a thick book, uh, soft cover, lots of colored uh, illustrations inside. And that's the way this new book is also. Um, the original version of this book was a about probably the, the first third of this book. It was about this thick. And it was the generic part of PLC programming. And I put it out through a, um, a different publisher, uh, Author House. And in retrospect, it wasn't a very good idea because they weren't very transparent with, you know, how many books I had sold. And I really, they wanted to just charge me for a lot of marketing and things like that. So I kind of discontinued that. And at the uh, urging of Automation NTH, I republished it. It's a nice thin book like this. And it has also the NTH uh, University logo on the front of it. So this just came out uh, less than a month ago and immediately um, Dexcom, which was the company that was using these ordered 50 of them, which was great. So it pretty much paid for reproducing this in my own format. And of course, this is available uh, things, places like Amazon and things like that. So this new book is kind of a combination of these. I would say it's about as thick as the two of these together. So uh, it is 384 pages long. And one of the cool things that I've done um, on this book, this is a kind of a blow up of the cover of the book. I've extracted all the different sections of the book and made individual documents out of them. Uh, there are several reasons for this. Uh, one, there are a whole lot of different subjects in this book. And um, the subjects would be taught as individual classes, typically. So I'm going to drag a spreadsheet over here and kind of show you what is in um, the book. And it's not necessarily in the order that it is in the book. As a matter of fact, you can see some of these are in alphabetical order. But this is a bit on the content of the book. Uh, the basic troubleshooting um, portion of the book is actually, there's some classical uh, troubleshooting methods, the half split method, things like that. Um, Ishikawa diagrams, classical ways of doing standard troubleshooting. And then there is uh, a part that I put in the beginning of the book that was on 
uh, just observation and analysis of machinery, using your senses, learning how machines operate by watching them, um, reading documentation, some of the different types of documentation that are available, um, you know, in, in manuals and things like that. And of course, research that you can do online. So that was the first section that I broke out of the book. You can see here, it was uh, nine pages by the time I, I pulled everything out. Uh, I have revision one here for all these. And I started doing this just a few days ago, right after uh, the book was put out for publishing. Um, so a little note on that, the book uh, was submitted to Ingram probably two weeks ago, and then they go through a review, and then I have to get a cover together. And that's, that's where um, this cover here kind of came from. Fortunately, my daughter owns a branding company and has a graphic designer, and she wanted to find some good colors that go with the Automation NTH and NTH University logo. So she found things that were kind of orange and gray rather than the old school uh, blue that I've done here. And so that's the way the new book is presented. Um, uh, where was I at? So uh, this, this section, this is just an example of the first section. Uh, then I've always wanted to either write a book on machine vision or create a separate part. So I did that here, uh, 18 pages long. I took the exercise for machine vision out of it. And then I started writing down the details of each one of the sections. Um, so you can see here, what is machine vision, components of machine vision, you know, lighting, lensing, things like that. So all these sections uh, by themselves are fairly short, which is useful. If you add them all up, I kind of did that here and I had 314 pages out of the 384 pages in the total book. I think the rest of the pages some of these are going to be taken up. There is a final troubleshooting exercise that I'm going to break out. But honestly, that, that exercise goes pretty heavily with this understanding schematics and also refers to a lot of these other sections. So I'm not exactly sure uh, how I'm going to break these out. But if I were teaching an individual class on any one of these subjects, what I would do is um, present just that section of the book because honestly, this, this new book, uh, you know, it lists at 75 bucks. Part of it is just, it's, it's a lot of color pages. It's a big book and that's why it costs that much. I think by the time it's done, my guess is it'll be available online for somewhere around in the fifties um, and you'll be able to get the whole thing. But what I plan to do is make all of these individual sections also downloadable from inside of my Automation Academy website. Uh, so that's kind of the big news that I had today is I wanted to uh, present that and that that's what I'm going to do for all these sections. Uh, the PLC section here, for instance, the programmable controllers, uh, when I pull it out, you know, it's modified a little bit from this book. So this book is, let's see, uh, uh, so you get to the end part of it, 119 pages. And it's 63 here. And I think parts of this have been pulled out and put in other sections. So for instance, uh, uh, there is a history in here of PLCs. I didn't put that and break that out. I didn't put it in my troubleshooting book. So I started um, at this physical layout of a PLC section. What is a PLC? Things like that, which was uh, probably in the beginning, you know, page 22, something like that. And then also there are some parts that I broke out like on sensors and things like that. And I put them in this set, uh, other section here, input devices and sensors, which you can see is another 19 pages. And then what I've done here is broken out what is in that particular document. So you can see here in the input devices and sensors, there are buttons, uh, you know, input devices, syncing and sourcing, explanation of that, special sensors that are not discrete or analog. So there are analog and discrete sensors in here, but then there's things like encoders and barcode readers. Uh, there is a, a section on scaling and then things particular to troubleshooting of sensors. So uh, kind of tools you might need and things like that for sensors. So one of the things that's happened here is 
some of these sections, if I were teaching a class, for instance, on sensors, I might have to provide uh, students the electrical section, right? Because it explains DC, AC uh, devices, uh, digital and analog, and actually repeats the scaling lesson, right? Uh, then there's the input devices and sensors. And I mentioned troubleshooting, so I might have to provide the basic troubleshooting section since it's only uh, nine pages. But the nice thing about this out of 20 documents, I can combine these documents together as needed and print them out for students. Or later on, I may even uh, kind of republish these through Ingram as soft cover books specific to whatever class was being taken. Uh, as I mentioned here, input devices and sensors uh, blends pretty quickly into instrumentation, uh, which has things like flow transmitters that aren't strictly analog uh, devices. They, they have pulses and things associated with them, sometimes communications-based um, IO exchange. So you might have to have the communications section of this book if you were taking that particular uh, section. But if all you wanted to learn was, for instance, um, you know, fluid power, you might need to know a little bit of electrical, you might need to know a little bit of communications, but you probably wouldn't need to know things like motor control or motion control and robotics. Um, another really nice thing about these, I fully intend to change these documents. So uh, they are going to grow as more things uh, you know, become necessary to merge into them. For instance, at Automation NTH, um, a couple guys just did a really nice class on servos, and they have a whole lot more information in their class about servos than I have in my motion control and robotics section. Um, and then, for instance, we have a, an Epson class there at Automation NTH that people take, and there's a lot more information in there specific to Epson than this general article on robotics. So I may pull sections of those out as necessary, or if I were teaching a class that were, for instance, on Epson robots, I might grab a lot of the things particular to Epson software, uh, whereas all these are meant to be generic. Uh, as I mentioned, the, the PLC section, I pulled a lot of the basic um, uh, generic part of this. It's not specific to a, a particular brand. And I put it in this section. Uh, I had taught a safety class before. I want to say the document for that was about 50 pages long, but by the time it made it to my book, it, you know, it's only 12 pages. So I left out a lot of the things that might be already mentioned in other sections and things like that. Um, this section was a little longer than I thought it was going to be uh, on tools and techniques, because as I looked around the panel shop at Automation NTH, I realized some of the things that the panel builders uh, might need to learn, right? If they were, if somebody was hired straight out of high school or something, they didn't have maybe a mechanical background, but all of a sudden they find themselves working in a panel shop, they might need to know a lot of the different tools that are available to them. So I mentioned here uh, the mechanical tools, measurement, mechanical measurement tools, calipers and things like that, um, hand tools that are available, power tools, a lot of things that probably some people take for granted. You can go down to Home Depot and buy a lot of these tools or Harbor Freight or whatever. Uh, but I put a lot of the particulars in there for people that don't know uh, how to specify saw blades, different saw blades for different materials, things like that. I put some pictures in there of, uh, you know, things like cutting out an HMI uh, panel hole. How is that done on, on metal? I certainly learned that the hard way. I tried a plasma cutter the first time I ever cut a hole in a, uh, an enclosure, on a big enclosure, and I actually caught some of the materials that were left inside on fire. I think I was about 30 years old when I, I tried that one, but in retrospect, it was not good to use plasma cutters to cut holes for uh, square things inside of, in the enclosure, right? So that's why people use, um, you know, jigsaws and things like that for that. So I put a lot of that in the tools and techniques part that are particular for people, you know, building control panels or doing mechanical maintenance. Um, going back up to the top, you can see here there are some uh, mechanical things, and I merged the 
different types of maintenance into the mechanical section. There are a lot of different, uh, you know, types of maintenance, uh, uh, things like preventive maintenance versus corrective maintenance. So I, I talked about some of those topics in here. And then again, broke them out. There's not a lot in here. Now you would think mechanical, only seven pages long, you know, how much material could be in there? Well, this was specifically on powertrains and I left out the part about the motors themselves or motion control or fluid power, right? Which includes your pneumatic and hydraulic stuff. So all these sections uh, can be pretty standalone. But again, if I were teaching a class on something in particular, I might not need to uh, include other books, uh, other handouts in combination with them. Um, machine vision, you know, that's another one. This was standalone. And I do mention things like Cognex and Keynes, but it was meant to be generic introduction to what machine vision is. And then again, if I were teaching a class on Cognex or Keynes, I would include a lot of the specific lab material that comes directly from them already. I don't want to republish things that they've already explained. Uh, let's see, safety systems. Again, I mentioned that I taught a class for NAS a few years ago and pulled out a lot of different things on the different standards and terms and guarding and safety circuits, uh, classifications, things like that. There was a lot more material in that class than there was in this document, but 12 pages is pretty readable and gives you a lot of the basics of machine safety. So uh, it's not meant to be, you know, don't, you can go read 300 page documents if you really want to go into detail on safety systems. But when you combine all this together, this is again, the content of what's in the book. Now, this section is pretty interesting. I mentioned, I, I put here, it's 49 pages in it. As you can see by the date, I started that this morning and I don't even have this uh, details section finished yet. So I'm still working on this on another computer over here. Um, and I haven't even started the visualization and notification part. What I did uh, several days ago was simply copy the sections directly out of the book into separate documents. Then at the head of the document, I put the title, the revision number, things like that. On the bottom of the document, I put the page numbers and then had to go in through all these documents and uh, change the figure numbers because as I copied them out, they'd be at, you know, figure 300 and something. And I had to change it to figure one for the first figure that's, uh, you know, illustration that's in the document. So that's a lot of what I'm doing to extract these. And as you can see here, that was most of yesterday's work was simply doing from item number six here to item number 17. Uh, that was what nine documents and probably a hundred and some odd pages. And it took uh, most of the day yesterday to do that. So that's kind of what I was working on yesterday. Um, this section, as I mentioned, I've just started. It is very particular to a machine that is at uh, Automation NTH. It's a really cool machine. It's just a trade show demo. But you can see some of the different things that I covered specific to that machine. I started out with just general NEMA versus IEC because a lot of people, uh, even at Automation NTH, they mostly build equipment for um, US consumers. So all the drawings are in the NEMA style. Well, if you go to Europe and you look at the IEC symbology, it's different. So I kind of spelled out what some of those differences were at the beginning of the document not particular to the sweet machine, but I said, you know, these symbols that you find in here may be different uh, if you look at documentation for a different machine. So that's kind of what this was all about. Then I start going through the sweet machine schematics. There are both electrical and pneumatic schematics uh, for that machine. And I kind of go through every single page of those documents and I talk about the numbering system uh, talk about all the power feed and why certain components were used. Talk about uh, single lines or one lines. Talk about IO link. Uh, a lot of people use IO link in this country. It's kind of a uh, high tech method of getting more information from your individual sensors than just whether it's on or it's off. You can get uh, diagnostics and 
you know, health of the sensor, things like that. Went through DC power distribution, which actually uses IO-Link uh, for diagnostics there. Went through safety PLCs. So the cool thing about this, they use a lot of safety PLCs at Automation NTH, and I was able to uh, go through the schematics in detail and talk about things like what some of the terminal uh, designations are and how the uh, safety cards work. Again, if I were teaching a class on this, I would need to refer back to this uh, safety document. Let's see, where is it? Machine safety should be up here. Safety systems, there it is. So I'm gonna probably retitle this machine safety systems. Then I, now that I've broken this out, it's really easy to retitle things and do whatever. Um, so that's mostly it, uh, understanding schematics. I haven't gotten to the visualization and notification part, but what that mostly is going to cover is um, SCADA and HMIs and things like those text displays. Uh, a little bit on, on how they operate. And I went through a few different applications, not only the sweep machine that was mentioned here, but also some of the work that I've done down in American Beverage Depot. Um, one of the ways this is kind of coming full circle is American Beverage Depot is about to uh, have to train a lot of their operators and things. And this uh, book is really going to help probably in that area, I'll probably break out some of these different books and actually have them uh, converted into Spanish. Um, that plant is mostly Spanish speakers, and there is a severe lack of uh, documentation in Spanish. So I'm going to have uh, Juan Pablo down there uh, help me convert uh, a lot of that uh, documentation to Spanish and all he does, which is interesting, he just uses Google Translate, uh, even though he speaks fluent Spanish, of course, that's that's his native language, but he, he uses Google Translate, then goes through and edits the pages and turns them into uh, proper uh, Spanish grammar. And then, you know, he'll have to go through and format the documents like I did, but he'll probably take those one section at a time depending on whether we're going to have a basic electrical class or sensors class or a fluid power class, you know, PLC class, whatever it is, he can take these individual documents, convert them to Spanish. And if he does that, I will also make them available in the Automation Academy for download. Um, now, I mentioned here that if you ask me real nice, as we say here in Tennessee, if you hold your mouth right, you hold your mouth right, uh, then I, I could send these to you. You know, it's sometimes people see, you know, these uh, uh, videos and they just say, well, you know, gee, I'd like a copy of that or whatever. And I'll get, you know, hundreds of requests for me to email people copies of things. It, it seems like especially people from, um, uh, some other countries, certain specific countries, uh, just collect free stuff as much as they can and, and get it, even if it's not strictly legal to do so. Uh, sometimes I see people doing that. The reality is it takes me time to uh, fulfill all that stuff. It, you know, if, if everybody's just collecting free stuff, you know, I could spend all day fulfilling everybody's stuff and, and I'm, I'm not sure I have a lot of incentive to do that, right? Like everybody else, I, I need an incentive to send people things. So uh, I'm happy to send people documents if I think that it's something you're gonna be serious about and it's gonna help you in your career. Or of course, you can uh, join my uh, Automation Academy and you can download all this stuff for free. It's all included. Uh, as I mentioned, there are 20 documents so far. There's going to be a few more, for instance, uh, the troubleshooting exercise, and then the answers, which are to the troubleshooting exercise and to all of these exercises here. There are somewhere around 30 some odd exercises total in this book, including the final exercise, which covers uh, this understanding schematic section, right? You have to read this 
to answer the most of the questions in the troubleshooting exercise. In addition, I would probably, if somebody was uh, taking a class on reading these schematics and troubleshooting electrical troubleshooting, I would provide them uh, the understanding schematics, the electrical section, possibly instrumentation, uh, the tools and techniques almost for sure, because it has a lot of diagnostic tools on it, including multimeters and things like that. And of course, the basic troubleshooting document itself. So I would combine those into a document, teach a class on that, give them either this exercise or a modified version of this exercise, maybe that has more material in it or was specific to their plant. Um, and then turn that into a document, either print it or, uh, you know, maybe like I said, even publish it and put a cover on it. It's not all that hard for me to do that now. Um, and then, uh, give that to the class. And that would be the base material for the course. One of the things uh, I've learned on after teaching for the last, uh, I don't know, eight or nine years or so, uh, the first thing I started doing is teaching for automation training. And automation training, of course, has uh, very complete books. They look like uh, this. So this is a soft cover book uh, from automation training. And it has taken them a long time to develop these books. Uh, this one here, uh, four sections for a four-day class, probably, oh, 100 uh, pages, 100 and some pages long, has a lot of exercises in it, uh, very well formatted. It takes a long time to do this and to come up with exercises, and then it's evolved, right? Every year, uh, they come out with changes to the exercises. Um, as they get feedback from students. I know originally there was more original coding in their classes and they've kind of backed off of that because so many people are taking the classes and they're, they're not there to learn how to be programmers or typists, right? So uh, we'll do things like give them a list of the tags ahead of time so they don't have to type in all the tags. They can just import them. Um, but still people have to write code to learn how to take a class like this. And just like that, a lot of these courses, as I come up with different uh, in-person courses for these, this will evolve, right? The, the exercises will change. Uh, my technique of teaching these classes will change. And uh, same thing, if somebody downloads it and does self-study, I hope to get feedback from people and they'll say, you know, I wish this a uh, particular course had this material in it. And I'm willing to change these individual uh, documents as much as needed. Of course, not every suggestion will be taken, but uh, if people have really good ideas or if I you know, had a blind spot and I just completely left this section out, I can change all these sections. And the nice thing about self-publishing books is those changes can make their way into revised copies of this book. As a matter of fact, uh, one of the things I've thought pretty seriously of doing is republishing this book um, as a revision two and putting uh, the NTH University logo on the front of it. I think it's a great looking logo and they do use a lot of this material in their classes and maybe put some things in the book. For instance, I did um, my advanced section was on these little Fisher technique models that I use here. And uh, in retrospect, a lot of people haven't bought those models or used them. And I originally intended, okay, people will use these little models to do hands-on training in the courses, but there hasn't been a huge interest for that. You know, people haven't purchased those little models and I don't have enough models here for, um, you know, five or six people to do. So, um, you know, I may put more virtual material in the book, ultimately, in revision two of that advanced uh, PLC book and put a cover on it like this, because it then also it becomes more likely that some of the customers of Automation NTH would use um, that copy of that book. So that is mostly what I had to say today. The webinar, it's only been a half, half hour, but you know, nobody's shown up. I honestly don't expect a lot of people to show up on Saturdays, and I didn't advertise it much this week. I uh, mentioned it uh, yesterday online on LinkedIn, 
put it out there. And then this morning I came in and popped it back on there. But a lot of people wait for this to appear on YouTube anyway, and then watch it later. So the next webinar uh, will be in three weeks, once again, rather than two weeks. And part of the reason is I have to go to Seattle and teach a class. Uh, it's a, at the Navy base out there. It's 11 students, which is a bit much. And I'm teaching uh, Factory Talk View SE uh, Site Edition, which is their SCADA package from Alan Bradley. And 11 students is a bit much. We're all going to share a PLC. We'll see how that goes. Uh, everybody networked with the same processor, but everybody's going to have their own program to interface with. So the class itself I've taught before, and this class will be similar, but there has been quite a bit, again, of updated material, you know, automation trainings books uh, change. This one here is, you know, the Control Logics book. This is the 22, 2022 edition. And indeed, the SE class has a 2022 edition also uh, set up for having multiple students like this or using the emulator. And it does go into a little more uh, detail, just like my uh, documents here on visualization, notification, and SCADA itself, right? So I mentioned SCADA a couple times in here in terms of communications, controls, software, Right, I mentioned here HMI and SCADA software, and then I will mention more of it here. I haven't broken this out yet, but that's uh, much of the rest of today's material. After this webinar, I'm going to go back over to my other computer, um, NTH computer, and keep editing that. I would say I should be able to finish the uh, sweet machine schematic section and the visualization notification sections today and uh, ready to put these on the uh, Automation Academy site and make them available for people to download. Uh, how is the Automation Academy itself doing? You know, surprisingly, a lot of people have joined and remained members, even though people don't log in very often. I can see when the last person, you know, log, person last logged in, but people keep paying for it. Um, I, I hope they're just supporting me in my endeavors. And I think new people occasionally join and just uh, you know, do it for all the documents that are on there. As I mentioned, there are probably 100 plus downloadable documents. There are, I would say, at least 50 videos on PLC programming, HMI programming, um, uh, system design, systems integration, things like that. So if you are interested, uh, feel free to check the website out and please join. And uh, the next webinar, April 9th, again, three weeks, and happy birthday to me. That will be my birthday. So I will officially be 62 years old, um, still going strong, still writing material, and uh, hope you can join me then. I uh, didn't have anybody join me today, but uh, we'll see you later.